May God bless our meditation on his word for us this morning as we look at the book of 1 Timothy and as we continue to celebrate the Christmas season here at Trinity and the truth that Emmanuel has come, that God is with us. Well, it's December 27th and Christmas is over. The presents have been bought and wrapped and now unwrapped. The lights have been untangled and plugged in and now will soon be thrown back into storage in a tangled mess. The tree was set up and decorated and now it will soon be put away in storage or discarded altogether. The Christmas dinner was prepared and enjoyed and all the dishes have now been cleaned and put away with the leftovers stored or gone. The Christmas sales have come and gone. The countdowns until Christmas have come and gone. The holiday specials on TV have arrived and left too. While leftover Christmas cookies and stray Christmas decorations may still linger for a while, it won't be long, will it? Until it will be hard to find any evidence of Christmas at all. Christmas is over. Well, at least that's what our world would have you believe. That's the way our world looks at Christmas, isn't it? You hang a wreath for the season with excitement, only to rip lights down in a frustrated mess a few weeks later. You shop and you buy and you wrap with delight only to see the culmination of all of that work quickly come and quickly go. You fix a Christmas meal with cheer, only to hear grumbles three days later about leftovers again? The world's Christmas comes and it goes. And often the world says good riddance to it as it gets thrown out the door, as it lands in a heap at the curb. Now I know what you may be thinking this morning and at this point in the message. All right, Pastor Scrooge, thanks. Thanks for the Christmas cheer this morning. But I hope you noticed that I said that is how the world often looks at Christmas. And it is. For as far as the world is concerned, it's December 27th and Christmas is over. The world's Christmas does not last any longer than it has to. The world's Christmas often disappoints us. The world's Christmas often leaves us empty and exhausted in its wake. Now make no mistake, this message is not about the evils of Christmas lights or sugar cookies or gift giving. All those things are great. But none of them are what really makes Christmas Christmas. None of them are what is most important. But when the world around us acts and lives and believes that they are, well then Christmas quickly turns into something that our world is glad to see finally go. Well, today, we turn to the book of 1 Timothy. It's one of Paul's pastoral letters that he wrote to his mentee, the young pastor Timothy. And the letter gives instruction and encouragement for carrying out ministry faithfully and in good order. And so in our text from chapter 3, Paul writes this in verses 14 and 15. I hope to come to you soon, but I am writing these things to you so that if I delay, you may know how one ought to behave in the household of God, which is the church of the living God, a pillar and buttress of the truth. Paul hoped to visit Timothy in person, but since Timothy was in Ephesus, and since Paul was in Macedonia, with over 500 miles in between the two, Paul puts his words of instructions down to share in case the two don't meet. 
Paul's words are meant here to show Timothy how he is to live as part of and as a leader of the church, which Paul says is a pillar and buttress of the truth. And then in verse 16, Paul goes on to tell Timothy what really matters. Great indeed, we confess, is the mystery of godliness. He was manifested in the flesh, vindicated by the Spirit, seen by the angels, proclaimed among the nations, believed on in the world, taken up in glory. You see, Paul is saying that the truth that the church is built on is the truth of Christ and what he has done. That is our confession of the mystery of godliness. We talked about this mystery in our Christmas Day message as we saw how the Old Testament prophets prophesied of Jesus, the one who was to come, and they prophesied of him again and again and again. And then in the New Testament, gospel writers confirmed these prophecies one by one through their eyewitness accounts of the life and the ministry of the death and the resurrection of Jesus. That's the mystery of godliness that Paul talks about, that he was manifested in the flesh, that the Son of God came to earth and became a man at Christmas that he was vindicated by the Spirit and seen by angels, that Christ rose from the dead by the return of his human spirit to his body, and that, that angels were present at his empty tomb, that he was taken up in glory. That means his ascension, which further proved that he is the Son of God, that this message was proclaimed among the nations, for Christ came for all, that this has been believed on in the world by those who have been given faith in Jesus, by you and me. This is our confession of faith, is it not? This is our confession of what really matters. And this is also our confession of why Christmas really matters too. For as the church, we believe and confess that God came to earth in Jesus, that Jesus lived a perfect life, free from sin, unlike each and every one of us, that Jesus suffered and died on the cross to pay the entire debt of our sin so that we would be forgiven and free, that Jesus rose again from the dead, defeating death and its ultimate power for us, and that Jesus has ascended to heaven one day to return and to raise the dead from their graves and to call all who are in Christ to him for all time. This is our confession, and this is also why Christmas is so beautiful and so important. For if Christmas was only about the gifts, the food, the lights, the music, the tree, the ornament, and all the rest, then it would fade from our minds and fade from our hearts as soon as we stand in a customer service return line, as soon as we eat leftovers for the fifth time, as soon as we get tied up taking down lights or throwing out trees or all the rest. If Christmas is all about what God has done, what He continues to do, and what He will yet do for us in Christ, well, then our celebration of it should show no signs of stopping. And so, as Christians, we can and we should boldly say that Christmas is not over. For the truth of that first Christmas, that God sent a Savior for you and me in Christ Jesus, that truth is just as meaningful and true for us today as any day before or any day yet to come to. For us as Christians, Christmas is not over, and it never will be. Now, I can already hear my wife excitedly asking me later today, does this mean we can leave up our Christmas tree all year? 
And just so we're clear, no. The answer is no. But it does mean this, that the truth of the gospel, the truth of what Christmas is all about, that endures. It endures past December 27th. It endures into 2021. By God's grace, it will endure until Christ Jesus returns and forever after that too. For Jesus is born. Emmanuel has come. God is with us. And the Christmas good news that we have to celebrate is this, that He, He always will be. In Jesus' name and for His sake we pray. Amen.